superior knowledge, it is a way to achieve immorality. The Dalai Lama once said, and rightly so, as only by sharing thoughts and ideas, we can discover new things together. Hello, we are Amit and Daniela from Hegrunche. Through Hegrunche, our mission is to introduce people to the amazing vegan Indian cuisine and to discuss topics we find interesting with a wider audience. In this episode of our podcast, we would like to talk about how do we experience being an intercultural couple. We aim to answer the questions like if we had any misconceptions before dating each other about each other's culture, country, and how is it when we travel to each other's country? How was it for Daniela when she was there for the first time in India? How was it for me when I was in Netherlands? We discuss a little bit about the Black Lives Matter movement and we discuss some takeaways from some really nice documentaries and movies that we have watched about racism. So yeah, I would like to welcome uh, Daniela. Uh, yeah, hi, <laughs> here we sit again. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice uh, topic we're going to talk about today. It's not, yeah, not all things are really nice, but right. it's nice to discuss together and with people who are listening to us because we had these talks, I think, the last five years together and we learned a lot from each other. Right. And yeah. it's nice to talk once again about it. Yeah, it's it remains about sharing stories and experiences and yeah. trying to be in each other's shoes as yeah. as different people and see how life is from that perspective so i'm really happy that yeah we could share it with our uh, followers our audience uh, and maybe they can uh, get something out of it like our experiences and uh, yeah um, i think like just let's just get started with uh, with the first question because you have told me many times already, but <laughs> but yeah, I would like also our audience to know like the misconceptions that you had before dating me. Like, I would I'm I'm from India. Uh, you're from Netherlands. Uh, before we met for the first yeah. time, like what things <laughs> did you had in mind about India, about yeah. me in general? I didn't know a lot about India. I traveled quite sometimes, mm -hmm. but I never also had the feeling I wanted to get to know more about India or I wanted to travel there. And I think that was because of everything I see on the news. Mm -hmm. If India is on the news, it's mostly not that positive. And yeah, yeah they always are showing um, yeah, dirty streets. They show mm -hmm. the bad things that are happening there. So when I was like, uh, always busy with oh where should I travel to yeah India never popped up in my head yeah but then I met you and I don't know what it was but something that really um, attracted me to get to know more about you and mm. about your culture about India and on our first date you told me quite some things about India mm -hmm. and I was really surprised by yeah, that. that you had really no idea about yeah I didn't know anything about India only the bad things that they were showing on the news and yeah one of the things it's a bit a difficult topic to talk about I think mm -hmm. but I want to mention it yeah. because it was something I was really wrong about in the beginning mm -hmm. because when you see India on the news most of the times yeah it's a lot about raping a lot yeah. of times it's in the news. Yeah, crime against women. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people, they think if they go to India, it's happening all the time and everywhere. Right. And you really learned me something about it. Yeah, yeah, that, that these are misconceptions. Uh, and yeah, yeah uh, I'm, I'm a data driven guy <laughs> or yeah, yeah, I just like facts and, yeah. and base opinions on based on facts and not uh, sensational news items <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that are presented to us by modern media so uh, not only in the western world but i think also in india there's a lot of negativity on the news and if you just frame your thinking based on what you consume 
uh, through uh, news and media, then then it's it's more often than not the wrong perception of a particular country. Yeah. And uh, yeah, as far as crime against women is concerned, like I, I remember I shared with you and and uh, yeah, we also saw together a few uh, documentaries. We saw uh, yeah, I, I presented to you some data also that there's more crime against women in Western countries per capita than yeah. in India. Yeah, India. What people don't always know that India is such a—it's a big, big country. country. Yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> as big as the whole of Europe. Right. It's it's almost 1.4 billion people at, at the moment, I think, and yeah. it's going to be like within this century, it will be more than China. So, let's put it in, into perspective. I think around the world, uh, uh, yeah, picture goes around where you have this circle. A really small circle, which is uh, including parts of India and China and South East Asia, and fifty percent of the world population is living in that area, yeah. and that is not that big of an area, like compared to the rest of the world. And still, one in two people come out of that area, so yeah, you so get an much. idea how much, how many yeah. people are living in India and China in general. Yeah, so maybe you hear it more coming out of that area that yeah. bad things against women are happening. Mm -hmm. But if you, what you say, if you see it, if you compare it to Europe, yeah. it's happening more in Europe than in India. Yeah. And that is something, yeah, it's not good, it's happening. Right, it's, <laughs> it's really, it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's not nice. It's uh, no it way that anyone can defend yeah. uh, anywhere around the world, in any city, yeah. any crime against women, men, uh, children, any, any humans, yeah. even animals for that matter. <laughs> we, are, yeah, we support veganism. So yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the, num the amount of animals that are killed worldwide every day for, uh, for meat, like more than 700 billion animals are, are slaughtered every year for uh, for the use of humans, yeah, um, yeah, that's that's another matter. But yeah, the, the the common the commonality that remains like is is just use a brutal force against someone who's innocent. Yeah, but I find it a good example to show how differently I and also yeah. other people can think about a subject just because of what they are seeing on the news. Mm -hmm. And this is just one. And the other thing you see in India yeah. all the time is like the dirty, small streets. Mm -hmm. And they are there. I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> they are there. But like if I talk about New Delhi, the, capit uh, the, the capital city of India, yeah. they are there, those small, dirty streets. Mm -hmm. But there is so much more. Yeah. And I always feel a bit angry that why do they not show yeah. that nice part of India on TV? Yeah. I really think yeah, people should show that more and we try if we are yeah. traveling to India to, sh to show those nice parts to people who are following us. Right. We, we even have plans like on our next visit yeah. to, uh, to make some uh, videos about yeah, it. Yeah, to film well. a bit more, to show yeah. India. Right, about, yeah. uh, about the good things that, um, yeah, because it's an ancient civilization, like even I'm in awe when I just think about all the different cultures that have survived for thousands of years together and and what they have like achieved in that time and and the kind of knowledge they had like so long back like yoga for example comes yeah. from india <laughs> um, all the, the nice food <laughs> right the food the spices yeah <laughs> there's so much more to say about india right. than what they are showing yeah the, the number zero comes from india without which like modern science or just the modern uh, system would not exist and we saw a movie that india was the first one who achieved it to yeah. go to 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 mars yeah, yeah. to mars we, we recently watched the movie uh, uh, mangalyan where uh, they showed the story behind people who uh, put uh, orbit in uh, yeah in the uh, around mars yeah. in their first attempt for the first time. It was the first yeah. country ever to do that in its first attempt yeah. to do research. And then, yeah, uh, of course, many people would say that, yeah, that's a lot of money that you uh, spend on it. But we saw that it was not, it was costing less than 10 cents per person in India 
to send a rover to Mars yeah. that even like making a movie on Mars in was Hollywood more expensive. cost more money than sending something yeah. really to Mars. <laughs> yeah, it was a really good movie we were watching and I never knew about this. Yeah. And that also shows how many more things there would be that are like so good about India that people don't know. Yeah. So yeah, I had a lot of doubts in my head when I got to know you. I thought like, yeah, I don't know India and I see all those things in the news about India. Should I really start dating someone from India? <laughs> and I remember I was, I, w I told this to a colleague that I met someone from India mm -hmm. and I told her that in the beginning, like when I was dating with you, yeah, I don't know, he is not from here and he's coming from India and <laughs> I don't know even if he wants to stay in Netherlands and I, I really don't want to go there because yeah, I still yeah. had all those pictures from yeah. the, the news in my head. And she just said, just get to know him and then you can decide. And now, yeah, yeah, here we are five years, yeah, you, six you, years later. You just have to be open in yeah. general and uh, the same from, from my side as yeah, well. Yeah, because how was it for you <laughs> in the Netherlands? Yeah, uh, like at the moment we met each other, I was already a couple of years here. Yeah, two, um, two years, I think. Right, yeah. yeah. And in that time, I was mostly in a bubble, in a student life. So from a student perspective, I did have quite a lot of experiences and it was quite international. So yeah. uh, it was the first time that I got out of India and I got into university where I got to know people from many different countries. Like at least I think in the first year I talked to people from more than 50 countries. Oh, that's a lot. And the university, there were people from 180 plus countries. Mm. And at the end of my study, I, I can easily say that I interacted at some <laughs> moment with people from more than 100 countries. So you were in Netherlands, but right. you were kind of in a bubble where yeah. so many people were from yeah. so many different countries. Yeah. So, of course, like we all were in the Netherlands. So there was like the, the culture of Netherlands was really in front of us uh, there to explore. But I also got to know through the stories of my uh, yeah um, study mates about stories of other countries in africa southern america southern uh, europe for example how different it is from western europe how different it is from eastern europe yeah in general i remember a, a pro, uh, exchange program where i had i i still have contact with him there there was a guy who uh, stayed in uh, stayed with me uh, on the exchange i think for a few days um, like we shared a room together and he was from Slovakia oh. and I really got to know about his country the the region he comes from and and how people are there for example yeah I you also really... went there on a trip right yeah I went later to Slovakia yeah. as well and I met him there and I was really amazed by his uh, yeah his attitude towards me how friendly and uh, and open he was and how thankful he was that the moment that I uh, that that he visited us and yeah. that I offered him a place to stay um, at in my room and he one thing that really uh, also I found funny like that was from a cultural perspective is that uh, I remember that I asked him and that was just out of friendliness and and just the culture that I come from that he can just sleep on my bed and I will sleep on the ground because we didn't have an extra mattress. Uh, or a really thin one, I think it was not. Yeah, but he and he was really shocked that yeah, it was my room and that he was allowed to sleep on the bed. And we had quite some discussions, but I was really adamant that no, you are the guest and you have to sleep. You can sleep like at mm -hmm. a better place. You can sleep on the bed. I also remember that when <laughs> I was my first time in India, yeah. that we were not allowed to sleep together yeah. uh, in one bed. So I got one full bed for myself yeah. and you were sleeping together with your mom, grandma and uh, yeah, even a short too. time with your sister. <laughs> yeah, I was, or, yeah, or on the floor. Yeah. I was sleeping a lot of times on the floor as well. Yeah, but you were in one room. Yeah. It, like the four of with you were together. in one room and I had a whole room for myself yeah. and I felt so bad about that. <laughs> Yeah, but in India that's completely normal and because guests are treated at par with God and they like pe guests who come uh, to visit, people have the utmost respect for them and yeah. they 
they want to make them as comfortable as possible even though it means for a few days or for some moments letting go of your own luxuries to do that and that that's just normal and coming out of india i realized that it is not normal in many parts of the world to do that yeah and that was kind of a culture shock for me because in india for me that was really normal to treat guests the way we do and also be curious about people who uh who who are coming like uh who we see around and who are from a different uh culture like you experience that <laughs> as well <laughs> that's actually the next question like uh but but yeah let's get that to that as well like how it was in our respective countries when we traveled around in public or just arrival because you the first time you went to india was directly for a month yeah and that was directly for a month at my parents place because in your culture that's not normal and the second time you were there was for half a year yeah and most of the half a year again was at my parents place yeah. so can you describe the differences in culture first maybe you can tell like how it is in netherlands because maybe we have also some listeners from india who would like to know uh how is it in netherlands the the difference and how it was it for you to experience the culture in india yeah i think in netherlands if uh, for example you would have come from india to netherlands it's not that normal to stay with the whole family like <laughs> yeah now you're staying with my parents because yeah. they know you quite good right. and it's it's okay uh but it's not that normal still to do like yeah. everyone is having their own house like uh your parents they have their own house mm-hmm. your uh, like your grandparents they are having their own house and the children at one point if they are leaving the house doesn't matter if that's at 16 18 or 20 or 25 years old but mm-hmm. if they are leaving the house yeah. they are out and they and are they're, like they're, they're not are, expected to return back yeah it's not yeah. it in my situations it happens it doesn't sometimes. happen mostly yeah that's but not part of the, the culture but most of the time yeah it's not part of the culture to yeah. move back with your parents again and yeah. stay there and even get your husband over and mm-hmm. or your your boyfriend yeah. um it's just not that normal But when I went with you to India, mm-hmm. yeah, we didn't even think about it to stay somewhere else. No. Your parents would not even liked it if we would have done that. No. <laughs> yeah, and that was the reason that I directly told you that it's going to be yeah. uh staying at a parents place yeah. uh, because yeah, at least yeah, for me, I know that they are really going to be sad if i'm around and i'm yeah. not staying with them <laughs> yeah and the first time i came with you it was directly for one month that's a long time i think it was the longest month in my life yeah and not because i was not liking it but it was really difficult for me yeah uh, i uh, it's a world of difference i can such, imagine yeah it was so difficult because there are so many differences i didn't know how to cook the indian food that time mm-hmm. I couldn't speak the language. Yeah, that makes a big difference um, already. So I couldn't yeah, I could talk with your mom and dad, but it was still a bit difficult because we didn't know each other that good. Mm-hmm. And yeah, in that time we were already having a relation, but at the same time it was also a bit like yeah. Yeah. We don't know. It, it's it was not like especially in India it's not happening that way that you're that you Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were little over half a year together I think because yeah. that happened in the summer of 2018. Yeah. We met, met towards the end of 2017, so less than half a year uh directly for a month uh going with your boyfriend <laughs> who comes from a different culture to live with his family. That's yeah. quite an adventure I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but also for in the Indian culture it's not really normal to do right. it that way. Yeah. Yeah. So for your family, we were a kind of we were knowing each other. Yeah. But that was kind of it. Yeah, it's it's really funny also that that I introduced you just as a friend who's yeah. interested in traveling to India because by that point you were interested in traveling to India. Yeah. I um, really because I had so many talks with you yeah. about India and I got more curious about I would like to see it then I would like to go there to experience it myself. Yeah. But to really step into an Indian family mm-hmm. was really um yeah, 
was really a bit more than stepping into India. Because if you travel to India, yeah. you're around other travelers. But I was really in the middle of a Indian family. Yeah. And it was difficult, but at the same time, I, yeah, I was also like feeling I want to get to know you better. I want to get to know your family better. I would like to learn more of the culture. And the best mm -hmm. way to do that is to be really in the culture. Yeah. And what were some more interesting um, experiences you had in your first month that were different from home? Can you talk about them? I think almost everything. <laughs> but some, some <laughs> funny ones maybe, just, just something that you really didn't expect. That people wanted to go on a picture with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that, like in yeah. front of uh, Taj Mahal, for example, when yeah. we went in front of uh, Kutub Minar. Yeah, yeah if um, I was around your family's yeah. house, that didn't happen. Yeah. But when we really went out to a place I would like to visit, yeah. then people just came to me yeah. and with also with their whole family. Right. And, and then individually yeah. everyone go, wants to go on picture as well yeah. and then they want a family picture. Yeah, and I was really <laughs> surprised by that. So yeah. most of the times I was saying no yeah. because it felt a bit awkward like, yeah, yeah. what are you going to do with that picture? Yeah, I can of imagine me? because um, if, if that happened to me in Netherlands, yeah. I would have the same feeling. Yeah, it's I, just I didn't weird. have that. Yeah. But at the same time, it was not in a bad way. No, they, it was it was a curious way because yeah. like as I say most of those people are coming to Taj Mahal for example is known not only in uh, in the whole world but uh, especially in India like it's a really big uh, touristic destination and people are coming from small villages all around India to visit it like uh, to yeah with family yeah and the villages they come from uh, it's possible that most of them have never seen a white woman ever in their yeah. life. Yeah. or just a white person and they are so intrigued by, uh, by, by that that they want to capture that moment and yeah. nowadays it's possible <laughs> yeah. and that's also when people uh, as, a, as a woman you're going to India a lot of times they are saying oh you should watch out people yeah. are looking and staring yeah. and they do mm -hmm. they, they are looking at me all the time yeah. and I feel all the eyes on me yeah. but no it's not a bad thing it, they are yeah. not doing that because they um, yeah, they they are doing that because they are really interested in oh, yeah. who is that? And they are yeah. it's, it's it's out of curiosity, yeah. it's out of surprise that they yeah. didn't expect it at that moment of the day. They were just busy with their day-to-day -day life, and they're not used to seeing <laughs> people from outside. Yeah, be it be it like blacks or whites, it's the yeah. same. Like just even, different than being Indian. Right. Yeah, there are a lot of Nigerian students in India. Unfortunately some of the stories from them is also very negative because um, uh, yeah that's that's the way it is um, i always blame it on on kind of a hierarchy that uh, is there in the world like kind of a power struggle depending on uh, your skin color that's really unfortunate that it's there yeah. and i've talked about it with you as well um, and it has to do with the mentality uh, that came in uh, during the british rule Mm, where the yeah. British kind of uh, abused their power uh, in that time to uh, and also to make Indians feel inferior because of the skin color and that's where it comes from that yeah a white skinned person is above you he's yeah. your master and if you're uh, less um, like yeah the the darker your skin color the lower you are in the hierarchy yeah and that is also something what you're saying now that I never noticed that because, yeah, I just yeah. don't know. I cannot hear people talking. Mm -hmm. But you a lot of times were saying that they did more work for me because of my color. Yeah, yeah. I'm like not, if I'm we not... went shopping, for example. Right, yeah. And that also comes from, uh, according to my beliefs at least, uh, from the idea that you, uh, being a light-skinned woman, yeah. uh, have more money. So, of course, they especially people who are in jobs, in day-to-day -day jobs, uh, who want to make quick money, yeah. they see you as a potential uh, yeah. to, to earn quite a lot of money in a short period of time. So yeah. <laughs> they come up with stuff and they want to sell you everything mm -hmm. that they have for uh, yeah, crazy amounts of money yeah. so that they, they, they can pay their bills. Yeah. Um, but I also understand yeah. that because people they are not like some people in India are not having that much money 
and then they are seeing me and they think oh maybe yeah she is not knowing the prices here maybe i can earn a bit more yeah and not with bad intentions because they feel like i can now maybe feed my family better i can give my children a better life yeah. and yeah i didn't pay those prices yeah. <laughs> because yeah i was with you in the indian family yeah. and your family knows what is a good price to pay mm -hmm. and um yeah it's also quite quite double because before i came to netherlands i had a really good friend from nigeria his father was working at the nigerian embassy and uh, I, I i was quite good friends with him and we were just going around uh, in delhi and i experienced all the same things as you had like i had with you i experienced with him as well that people wanted to go on a picture with him people wanted to sometimes sell things to him at a higher price yeah and at that moment i then yeah uh, i realized that it it is just it is also because you are different they see that you are not from there yeah and they of course because of certain circumstances they they are not paid well in their uh, daily jobs it's uh, they live uh, close to poverty if not uh, under the poverty line and they want to just get by the day they want food on the table for the family at the end of the day yeah um yeah we talked a lot about me in india <laughs> yeah but how yeah. about you have you yeah faced racism in the netherlands like did you felt different or how mm, was it for feeling, you feeling different yes i would not directly call it uh, racism uh, i have heard stories of racism from my fellow students uh, i was in the student council of my university there i've i've uh, heard and i've uh, also tried to address uh, situations where people uh, from outside or or especially uh, students they uh, were facing racism for example getting a house in netherlands uh, it was already difficult in that time now <laughs> even it, more <laughs> now it's impossible it seems like yeah because a lot of times they were riding only, only dutch people only dutch right yeah. yeah so they were like these uh, student houses where just a normal house with like three bedrooms and a garden and yeah. uh, every bedroom is for a student and then one student like usually for example dutch students are living in there one moves out for internship or they're done yeah. with the study so one house comes free they would only like students who speak dutch uh, who are dutch yeah um to be there um and yeah it's 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 a bit it's it's a bit gray in that uh, gray area it is yeah. like it's not really black and white because yeah. i understand a little bit from the side of those students that they would want something familiar to live with rather than a new culture so they yeah. are not that open to letting a chinese or an indian student in their home uh, but it was also too evident and it was that that they were on purpose leaving out a group of students who were already in need who were in a different country in a situation where they would yeah rather appreciate if someone helps them um uh, that 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 was not happening and uh, that according to me and also many of those students was kind of differentiating and and uh, there was a hint of racism in there yeah so that's this one topic like uh, related to housing um, yeah the, like it's 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 just different like when when i come from india like i uh, when i came here I knew that things are going to be different in the west all my perception about how things are here about uh, just people live here come from a few hollywood movies that I've I had <laughs> ever watched in my yeah. life and I was just thinking like yeah people are just really easy going here uh, just those typical hollywood movies you know you work mm -hmm. 9 to 5 you uh, have a happy hour after that yeah. Yeah because of those movies your family <laughs> was thinking right. that all women are like dating so many men and right. they yeah. are not and they they don't stay yeah. longer in marriages and, and yeah. they uh, quickly have fights with their husbands and yeah. they move on but 
on both sides actually that yeah. relations don't last too long and that was a misconception as well but also a bit of data driven because if you see of course the the the, the rates of divorce are way higher than in india than india yeah um and because of that the thinking arises that yeah if if you are going to invest yourself in a relationship with a white woman then more often than not you are going to face like yeah sadness at some point in yeah, life yeah but i think yeah. both of our families were a bit scared when we told them we met someone from not Dif- even yeah. a different culture but also a different country yeah because yeah you were not um on, yeah you were living in netherlands mm-hmm. but we didn't know for how long you had the plan to do that right so for both of our families it was quite difficult to mm-hmm. yeah get used to it yeah but the the difference that we also talked about and it it also took some time for me to get across is that in india uh, there is discrimination when you go there but it's positive discrimination yeah. mostly that you face that uh, you can get away with things that a normal indian cannot for example standing in queue uh, at a place uh, there are different lines for foreigners uh, a lot of times and and people try to make sure officials that you have uh, the least trouble of all um, you have faced these things yourself yeah right yeah i did and in india in in netherlands i had quite the opposite like uh, i didn't feel uh, positively discriminated at all like yeah, that sometimes yeah um, it was even negative um uh, but not exactly racism there were things that i got really hurt about uh, about how people said things it was not directed towards me uh it was directed for example towards uh turkish or moroccan people who are living here for a long time yeah. who are really who are dutch i i remember i used to go uh, to a barber and uh he was from turkey uh and i asked him like uh he could see that at that point i could not speak dutch his english was really bad as well <laughs> so but we found a way to communicate and i asked him in dutch like i i prepared a sentence in dutch <laughs> for my next visit i asked him in dutch like uh, where does he come from because i was curious like yeah. uh, but i was more thinking where in netherlands and he directly said i come from turkey um and i was really surprised at that moment because i thought you are born and brought up in netherlands you are you studied there uh, you should qualify to be a dutch <laughs> person but he uh, yeah he more does with turkey than her and then he opened up a little bit and in a mix of dutch and english he told me a little bit about like the struggles that he has had here and he opened up was a little bit on the discrimination he faces uh on a daily basis as well not a lot of people do that so that was quite like he thought that i could understand that because i was new to that country coming from a different culture and he was kind of trying to prepare me for what is going to life is going to be like if i plan to stay here for a long time or during the duration of my study and at that moment like and also later on i interacted with people where like just white dutch people were there who of course they are living here longer like their ancestors then uh then a turkish who arrived maybe yeah. 100 years ago maybe not even <clears throat> uh and and you see the differences like of course people live in their bubbles in netherlands you see that like people even like there is not a definition of a perfect dutch no like it doesn't exist who's a typical <laughs> dutch person nobody knows at this moment because all the cultures are so much mixed up in into each other yeah. that it's 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 difficult to have one answer to it, to it so yeah uh, that that kind of makes me sad and and i'm always looking for a solution on that and and on on the on the side when i hear stories from uh white people there have been instances where i'm really shocked by 
by the things that they say about uh, about like people who come from outside and the jokes that go around which i think are not funny if you're on the other side of it <laughs> uh, and it's it is racist for example i would say like i was uh, i was working at a company where uh, we had a whatsapp group together and there were there were like um, a few uh, people from outside in that group yeah and they said uh, in that group there was a message that went around like there there's this yogurt in netherlands uh, so i would just translate it in in, in dutch it said uh, hard uh, hard verkende witte mensen vla so it is like hard working white colored yogurt yogurt and there was like one thing like there was and there was lazy black yogurt something like yeah. that so it's it was quite it it is racist yeah it's just not point nice to yeah say. full stop it it was yeah. a racist comment and people get get away with it like with those things yeah. in netherlands yeah it's not good and sometimes i also try to explain you a bit where it comes from mm -hmm. that uh people are not nice towards yeah colored people and i think we coming back to the television again yeah because on tv if you see crime programs yeah. a lot of times you see colored people yeah. and especially older people are watching those programs right and so they really get the feeling that colored people are doing bad things mm -hmm. and of course those people they are committing those crimes but where those people cannot think farther is that why are they doing that right what is the reason that they are doing that yeah and i think younger people like us can think a bit yeah. farther yeah. yeah we also see that what they do is yeah. not good not only we, young i think there are also there are many people yeah. who are really open True. and they know that this part uh, there there are many good people as well so yeah there is a small I, i would say even a small handful who are really consciously racist yeah there is a big group uh i think the majority who are racist subconsciously yeah so it is somewhere and in the mind and that is by watching the news that is, for that example that is because of of the system that is because yeah. of the media that they are yeah. being fed and uh yeah i think because of time let's move to the next part like uh what we wanted to discuss was Yeah so anyway we we can just keep talking about like yeah. this whole subject for so long yeah. and yeah i see that we even have like one whole part that we couldn't talk about and of course uh, we won't keep our uh, our uh, podcast not short not too long not too long <laughs> and we didn't touch the black lives uh, yeah. uh, matter movement as such and and uh, uh, we plan to make another part about it i think that yeah. would be just really nice just let's make a part 2 there will be a part 2 coming about mm. it uh but yeah some final thoughts and then we will summarize this part yeah um on your part like intercultural differences what can you learn from it uh and and summarize it in, in your own i think you way. can learn a lot from it because i really learned a lot from you mm -hmm. because for example where i thought i wasn't racist mm -hmm. i got to know that in some i i'm i don't want to <laughs> say i was racist yeah. but i had some thinkings that were not subconsciously yeah. that were implanted in your mind that, that are racist. exactly the good words yeah. <laughs> i was looking yeah. for and uh, yeah. well i would i would really like to mention uh, the the doll experiment here yeah I think that's a really nice one to experiment yeah. because children doesn't matter black, white, uh brown uh they they are not uh programmed to be racist. So they will play with children of any color. They will um yeah, cuddle with them. They will uh they will not differentiate based yeah. on skin color. But we saw an experiment where uh children of like who had a darker skin tone they were uh, asked to choose and and just remember these children are on day to day basis they go to school so these are school going children who consume a lot of media as well so it doesn't matter the skin of their color they watch news maybe different yeah. kinds of news and different kinds of media they watch movies 
and they were uh, asked to choose between dolls of different colors. So one was a lighter colored doll, uh, a white doll, and one was a black doll. Mm -hmm. And they were asked questions like, which doll do you think is nicer? And nine out of 10 times, I think, I think even 10 out of 10 times, doesn't matter the skin of the color of the child, of it was uh, uh, black or white, even a black uh, kid was always choosing for the white one to be the nicer one. Yeah. And they were asking which color, which doll do you think is a criminal? Yeah. And they were always choosing the black one. Yeah. And even you're saying it now, I get like goosebumps everywhere. Yeah. And I also had it that time when I watched the, the yeah, it's a short documentary, I think. Yeah. You can find it everywhere on YouTube if you the doll search for doll experiment. Yeah. yeah. And I remember watching it. And that's also what I try to say now that even I don't want to be yeah. uh, a racist. Yeah. And I would still also not, I have some thinkings. Yeah, I would also not label someone like you as a racist. No. In fact, most of the people are not. We are no. all just humans and we have human emotions. And because of certain, we, we have the same blood, like under the skin, we are yeah. all the same. There is no difference, uh, like how we are. Uh, it's only we are even one race in fact we all are uh, come from homo sapiens and that's that's who we are yeah yeah and and that that small child like who's choose who's making a wrong decision because of the media that he's yeah. or she's being fed with i would not label that child as a racist no i would not label people who are subconsciously doing that so it is a collective effort that has to come uh from people's uh themselves that they they recognize uh, the differences and they they try to make more conscious decision on uh, on towards day-to-day -day things that they do that might hurt certain individuals yeah and in that way i learned a lot from you because there were some thinkings mm -hmm. i just i don't know how they came in my mind but they came in my mind uh, through the things I was watching, through the things I was hearing as a kid. And yeah, because I met you, I started to think differently about yeah. things. I learned more and I'm really thankful for that. Yeah. And that's also why I wanted to do yeah. this podcast. <laughs> yeah, so I think yeah. from, from together, it's a mutual feeling, like an advice to our listeners. If you like someone from yeah, a different culture, just go ahead with knowing that person for who that person is and don't judge them too much on on how they look where they come from yeah just take time to get yeah. to know each other oh, to right. get to know each other's with, culture with any relation in life yeah. like if you are doing business with them if you are friends with them yeah. if you are just be open and yeah. and just keep in mind that there will be some biases in your mind regarding uh, a person of a different culture but try to think beyond that yeah try to be open to yeah. to learn more yeah i think that's a fitting end to it yeah to our podcast for today thanks for listening i think uh, uh yeah our listeners could really get uh <laughs> like uh, some interesting stories and and some um yeah nice ideas from this post podcast please share your feedback with us and do share it with people you know and let us know if you liked it you can always uh, reach out to us on social media you should you should also write to us if you uh, want at uh, heygrunche at gmail.com you can reach out or just send us a message on social media at uh, heygrunche you can find us on facebook on uh, instagram uh, so that's it that was it for today and uh, another episode of the heygrunche podcast uh, thanks a lot for being there and we'll see you next time with another topic. Mm -hmm.